Well, as promised, uh, in this video, I am going to get into my plan for controlling the waste oil burning water heater. And this is uh, basically all the components that I have uh, picked out that will be going into this unit. So um, we've seen previously the little PLC, um, the PID temperature controller. Uh, and of course the uh, little metering pump so in addition to that I said there was going to be an auxiliary heater so I do have this here um, there is a circulating pump and I do have that blower I'm unsure whether or not I'm going to use it so I might as well integrate its control into this system so that I do have that flexibility later on and so Having everything just kind of laid out like this is not very user friendly. So what I'd like to do is take one of these uh, waterproof boxes here and uh, outfit it with all of the components so that um, there is like a cover in the top here. So that is where the uh, PID controller will get mounted kind of here. Uh, we'll have a couple buttons with some labels and um, a couple indicator lamps just to give us some uh, feedback as to uh, status of the, the PLC in the operating mode. So I had this piece of uh, black anodized aluminum and uh, I just cut it in the uh, using the table saw actually. The table saw works well for cutting aluminum parts. The key is that you do not want to really deviate at all uh, like to one side or the other while cutting or else things really go south uh, quickly so using a sled like this basically ensures that the workpiece of the aluminum remains square to the blade and uh, there's less chance of anything really bad happening just go really slow you're good to go well, here we go. This is that piece of uh, aluminum, scrap aluminum that I had. And uh, so I cut it to fit. I kind of rounded the corners to fit in the uh, little case here. And there we go. That is the starting point for our control box. So now what I'm gonna do is mark out where the temperature controller is gonna go, where the buttons, there's five buttons and uh, I think I have four or five indicator lights that also need to go into here. And um, the side of the box is where I'm going to uh, cut a hole actually to put the uh, pump through. And then there's also gonna be one of these uh, power inlets. So I'm gonna mount that probably on the back. Uh, a bunch of other little connection points um, just around the outside of this, just so that uh, everything can get uh, plugged in and connected and try and keep everything as tidy as possible without all kinds of wires and stuff hanging out. So gonna, yeah, start getting this cut and we'll go from there. Quick little update on the panel. So I've managed to get uh, the opening for the PID controller cut and the five buttons, uh, the holes are drilled. And then I also have four or five holes here for the uh, indicator lamps. And so what I'm gonna do now is uh, remove the switches and stuff from the PLC. Oh, I should mention, I also uh, set up a couple standoffs so that the PLC will actually get mounted to the back side of this panel. And that'll give us a little bit more room inside of that box for the other electrical connections and whatnot. So most of the electronics will be actually mounted to this aluminum plate. And uh, yeah, it's looking really good so far. All right, well, back out in the garage here again uh, from the last video where I was fabricating that front panel. I have um, made quite a bit of progress with the waste oil burning water heater control box. And so I'll give you a little tour around the outside so you get an idea of uh, what we have going on here. Then we'll look inside and I'll give you a little bit of a functions yeah, tour. Let's, uh, let's take a look. So uh, it's just a waterproof case. As I mentioned earlier on the side here, this is a recycled microphone jack. This is used to connect the, uh, the thermal well from the, uh, the water jacket. Uh, this here is just a power outlet, 12 volts DC. This is potentially used for the blower. That's what I have it set up for right now. So I can connect a blower there. Um, still trying to work through 
not using the blower. Uh, first results were actually quite disappointing. Although it was burning cleaner, it uh, really had a lower combustion temperature. So it took quite a bit longer for it to heat water using the blower compared to uh, naturally aspirated. Anyway, moving on, we have our uh, metering pump. I uh, just punched a hole through the side of the case here and it's all mounted nice and, and clean. Uh, coming to the back here, we have two outlets. Uh, first outlet is for the circulating pump. Uh, the second outlet is for the electric auxiliary heater. And so that's also controlled by the uh, temperature controller inside. And then we have a power inlet just recycled from a computer power supply. Moving on to the inside of the controller, we have our temperature controller. Uh, we have our five buttons, we have a toggle switch and a bunch of indicator lamps. And so I'm gonna take you through how all of these work together along with the PLC mounted on the other side of this panel to uh, run or operate the uh, waste oil burning water heater. So the first thing to do is to power up the DC, which feeds the uh, PLC, the lamps, and uh, all of the kind of lower functions here. So we turn that on and then we have working from uh, right to left, our five buttons, we have run, idle. So in idle mode, this basically sends a pulse of three seconds of oil every 30 seconds into the burner to uh, keep it basically just burning enough so that it doesn't extinguish. When we go into run, that is where we get into the 10 second uh, cycle where we can either increment or decrement the uh, run time of the uh, metering pump. So we can increment it in uh, intervals of one tenth of a second and the overall cycle for that is 10 seconds. So we can go up to you know two or three seconds out of 10 seconds or uh, decrement it however we want. The prime button is basically just a continuous run for the, uh, the oil pump, the metering pump. So it's basically just to get air out of the, uh, the line or it can also uh, flush out the oil from the line and uh, get it ready for shutdown. Uh, when we get into the, the EO, that is uh, electric oil. So that switches between uh, running the metering pump or just controlling the electric heater, uh, both off of the uh, PID controller. So if we go to electric, we get that. So that'll tell us that the uh, outlet on the back is active and then when we run with this, uh, this is where the oil pump will cycle every couple seconds to uh, feed oil into the burner. I don't have this uh, lamp uh, marked off yet, but this is actually showing that uh, that outlet for the blower is active and uh, it's basically uh, intended to run the blower as long as the uh, run idle is in run. So if we go to idle, it shuts the blower off and it reduces the feed of oil to three seconds every 30 seconds. So that is how uh, that works. There is uh, a couple functions for the temperature controller now. So the alarm on the uh, PID controller is actually connected into the PLC as well. And so once, uh, or if I should say, the temperature of the waste oil burning water heater exceeds that set point, this will trigger uh, basically a lockout in, in the PLC. It will stop the feed of oil it will stop the blower from running. It will basically stop everything from occurring. And the reason it's a lockout is so that if at some point the temperature in the water heater were to come back down below that alarm point and the controller here was to start feeding oil, there's possibility that the flame may already have been extinguished. And so we don't want the controller just dumping uh, cold oil into a, a pot that's not burning anymore, eventually it's gonna run over and make a big mess. So that's why it's a lockout. And so really the only way to uh, disable that lockout if there is a high temperature alarm is just to power cycle the uh, PLC. But that is more or less how the, uh, the controller works. So something else I'm trying out now is uh, I've taken this piece of flat. It's uh, just under three inches, uh, probably about 100 wall. And uh, I've kind of mounted it in the vise and I've created this twist and then I've cut a little notches in these little pieces here and flipped them out. And the idea is that this fits down into, into the flue there. 
and it's going to create some turbulence uh, as the combustion gases are rising and just try and get them to dwell a little bit longer so i suspect that uh, when we were having that clean burn there was a lot of like kind of laminar flow where uh, a lot of that exhaust gas is just kind of rushing straight through here not getting a lot of interaction time with the side of this tube and so we were just losing a lot of heat straight out the chimney so i'm going to try this in there it's a nice snug fit it uh it just kind of holds itself in place and uh yeah hopefully it's going to improve the efficiency a little bit in the uh, the heat transfer all right we are 19 minutes in at 74 c so i think the swirlator is definitely helping in retaining some of that heat and transferring it into the water jacket. So far, it's doing pretty good. Well, here we go. We are at 96 degrees. That's where I set the uh, shut off. And uh, we, um, we got to 96 degrees in 25 minutes and 30 seconds. That is the fastest that this has heated water yet. That is better than it heated with the propane heater and so I am extremely pleased with how this thing is running now. Something that I did notice is that when we get that resonance and the door starts to go whatever like that, it's, it's just running too rich so you've got to uh, reduce the interval of fuel and then it'll kind of calm back down. You could kind of ride that edge right where it's just burning optimally. I had uh, combustion temperatures at the door here about 750, which is perfect actually. That's really good. Overall, I'm really pleased with how this has been functioning. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a, a really uh, well-tuned uh, unit now. I'd say that the uh, swirlator inside of the, uh, the flue there, that probably made a big difference actually disturbing a lot of that laminar flow so that, uh, like I said, there's a little bit more dwell time for those hot gases to kind of interact in and around the water jacket. But yeah, like I said, overall, really happy how this has worked out. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that video here. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.